Hello folks and welcome to the Vertigo Tea Party and let's try Codemancer. It's by Important Little Games. Currently it's running a Kickstarter, it has a goal of $12,000. Currently it's at $39,000, which is awesome. The Kickstarter ends on May 28th, 2014. It's going to be available for PC, Mac, iPad, and Android tablets. Now this is going to be a little bit of a different game. and We're going to kind of go through the beginning here quickly. It begins. Bring me a pencil. This is a very interesting game because it's not like a normal game. It's supposed to be aimed at children, even though anyone can play it. And it's going to be teaching them how to program, which I think is actually a pretty awesome idea. Get up, Aurora. First day of wizard school. Time to wake up or you'll be late for, oh, you're already up. I hardly slept. I was too excited. Well, the first day of wizard school is the easiest, from what I hear anyway. I'm proud of you, Aurora. You're going to do great. So I think it's an interesting approach that they use to teach programming. I haven't been able to get that far, uh, frankly, in part due to various bugs, but that's to be expected. This is an early press release, so any bugs you see that you're almost certainly going to see are due to its early development state. So keep that in mind. You get to pick your familiar. This is basically, it doesn't seem to have effect on gameplay. It's just a graphical, graphical avatar. Wow. I'm going to pick the kitty cat because... Real men love kitty cats. So we're going to hop into this. Uh, we're going to kind of skip through the tutorial relatively quickly here. Uh, now, you have your blocks. It, basically, the way you act is in runes. You have to organize these runes to act. And the programming aspect will make a little bit more sense, especially to people who have done programming before. So we have this enemy in front of us. Well, this is the enemy, this is us. We need to attack it. So because of that, we're gonna drag it over here. Just say, okay. And we touch and hold to actually cast. And then we're gonna, we killed that, and then we're gonna move forward. Now this is gonna make a little bit more sense. So we're gonna hop over here. We're gonna cast, and we need to get to the target. Great. So again, you're probably thinking, well, how, how does this make any sense for programming right now? Trust me, it, it'll make sense. So first off, you can drag the ground to kind of look at, because some of these areas will be kind of large. There is, a, it's based on hexagonal movement, so it makes sense, should be easy to pick up. Sometimes I've had issues with figuring out when you're trying to go straight on a hexagon, it's a bit weird. Most of the time it's been pretty self-explanatory. I think it might have been a little bit better with squares, but there's other problems I have with squares too, so. Either way, you're gonna have different kinds of issues. So here we need, we're gonna kind of ignore the teacher here, just like a good student does. And we're going to, what we want to do is move forward twice, attack this, and then move forward twice again so we can leave. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag this here. This is the move forward block. Even though it's pointing up, it means move forward. And we're gonna change it to two. Uh, and th this is an interesting bug. You can actually just click it to change the number, or you can click and drag it to do this. This is what she wants you to do. I found out last time she won't move on until you do that part. So now we're going, we also want to attack at the end of the sequence. And we're actually, well, you know what? Let's go ahead and show you how this works. We'll do this tutorial the right way. So now we have move forward twice. That's what the two dots mean. So again, I could move that to five and I would try to move forward five times, which really wouldn't help because there's a monster in the way. So we need to move forward twice and then attack once. So let's cast our spell. So we move forward twice and then attack and then we win. It does get obviously a little bit more complicated. This game is aimed towards nine to 14 year olds, I believe they said. And again, I, I think this is an awesome idea to teach kids how to, to do the programming. So you can also pause time because these guys do hurt you. You got your health up here. And if you take all your lose all your health, you have to start the stage over, which isn't a very big penalty, which again, to be expected for a game that's aiming for a younger audience and something that's supposed to be both fun and teaching you how to the, understanding the basics of programming. And again, some of you who've done programming before, I used to do it in, in another age, about a decade ago. I understand what they're going for, and it'll make a lot more sense as we move forward. So we are going to, we're going to ignore the enemies for the most part. We're going to move forward twice, twice, and if we're going to attack, because we want to move forward and then attack, 
And then we want to move, actually, I think we can only use, there's also a limit to how many times you can use these various commands. So you can see how later on that could be a bit more complex. So let's go ahead and do this. And I just now noticed it seems like when you attack, you also move forward. Maybe that's the thing with a cat. I don't know. So let's go ahead and freeze this time because these things will turn around and hit you. So you don't want to do that. Now you can also do all of this in multiple turns, but you can, the goal I think is to do like do the attacks, do all the movement, one, one big sequence, right? So I could say, okay, turn an attack and now cast and do that. And then once it's done, then, you know, plan out what I'm going to do next. But I think you want to try to do it all at once if possible. I don't know if maybe at some point that'll be the only way to progress, or maybe you get more points that way. I'm not sure. But uh, so, you, know, you can use it to turn to attack or ignore it and go to the target. Well, I don't think you can ignore it because it's in the way. So we need this turn, turn spell rune. Basically, you organize the runes and then cast the spell and then it goes through the sequence. Hopefully that makes sense. So this is a turn to the right, depending on which direction you're looking, I guess. So we want to turn. She's looking this way. The cat's looking this way. So you want to turn twice. By the way, I do want to apologize if the video formatting is a little weird. I'm having to record this in a different way, so I do apologize about that. So we want to turn twice. We should be facing them. So we're going to attack once. And then we want to move forward once. Because then we'll be there. And then we will want to turn. We'll be facing this way. So we'll want to turn one, two, three, four, five, I believe. I'm probably going to mess this up, which is kind of shameful because I actually did use the program. And I don't know where the goal is, actually. Where is the goal? Oh, I see. It's up there. My, my, I'm completely blind, apparently. So you can take these out if you want. So we're going to kill this, and then we are actually going to turn two more. Oops. Two more and then move forward one. So what we should do here is turn twice, and we'll be facing this, attack, turn, one, two, and then move. So let's try it out. Turn, turn, attack, turn, turn, move forward. I'm an amazing programmer. So again, this is teaching kids or whoever plays it the basic logic behind programming setting telling the computer ahead of time i want you to do these things being able to plan ahead and get it to do its on its own without babysitting it hopefully that makes at least a little bit of sense and at some point i've seen screenshots i haven't been able to get that far in the game i don't know if it's in the press demo or not where you can see your runes and close or like next to it it actually shows what the code would look like in say python or something like that which i think is awesome i think that's a great idea I think it's a, it's just this idea of teaching kids and getting them interested early on in programming, I think is, is really awesome. And I say that as someone who doesn't even really like kids. So we're going to move forward once and all right, the turning really confuses me. It could just be my horribly stupid adult brain, but we're going to need to turn this way once. Now, and just to show you that it's possible, you can clear all your runes this way. You can do this once at a time, one at a time, if you want. But it kind of defeats the purpose. And again, I assume once the game's completed, it will give you some kind of bonuses for doing it more at once, right? But maybe early on when you're getting used to it, maybe split it up into two to three different sets of moves. And then when you really get used to it, do it all at once. And so we'll finish up here if I did that right. Yes, I managed to actually face the right direction. I'm actually doing really well in this game designed for nine-year-olds. Hey, kiddo, don't be don't mind. I see to watch your lessons. Dad, you're embarrassing me. Go away. God. I know, right? I hate when my dad watches me code. Don't worry. They're, they're just constructs. They can't feel pain. Well, that makes me not want to kill them. All right, so we're going to pause time here. And we're going to try to do this all in one go. I'm probably going to butcher this. But let's move forward. Attack that'll kill that one. I need to move forward again and again. You can see how many times we can use these runes. 
So this can be used twice. This can use, be used four times. This can, the attack can be used once more, etc. Which I think is a good limitation to get people, get kids in the, the set of using limited, limited, um, doing things the most efficient way possible is what I'm trying to say. So let's see, we move forward, attack, we'll move forward again, we'll turn, uh, God, the turns really mess with my head. We'll turn this way once, attack, move forward, and then we'll turn this way, and then move twice. All right, so let's see if we've got this. Forward, attack, forward, turn once this way, attack, move forward, turn once, and then move twice. All right, hopefully we do it right. And you can actually follow it over here. Whoa. Sometimes I've noticed the cat seems to jump twice, and you notice that she's still just running amok here. Sometimes it seems like when you attack, it jumps ahead one. I don't quite understand why that is. I don't remember having that issue with the tiger. So let's do this. Let's just do it this way first. Attack. Yeah, see, it jumps. That's interesting. That might be an attribute of the pet. I thought the pets were just cosmetic, but maybe not. So let's go ahead and use, let's clear the clear the room table. And this does get more complicated. I think within one to two more stages, it starts to add loops, like um, basically while loops, do while loops, for loops. Oh God, it's been a, it's been a while. Give me give me a break. It's been like since two thousand one, and since I've done any series coding, get off my back. So. We need to turn twice, attack, and then move twice. Or, well, actually, I don't know where we want to move because of the way the cat moves. So let's just do this. Attack. Okay. So let's move forward one. So we need to remember the cat sometimes when it attacks, what attacks and goes through the enemy. Now, so now we're getting into loops. Now, this is where it's going to start getting very interesting, I think, where basically this, whatever happens within this loop occurs however many times is indicated here. So, for example, I'm trying to think of the easiest way to do this here. We want to turn once, move once, move forward once. And then turn once and then move forward once. So we want to do this twice, right? In this loop. And you can see we can't actually drag those out because we've only we're run, we've run out of movement tiles, runes, whatever they're called. So we want to turn to the right once, move forward, turn to the right once, and fo move forward. So this should do it. So as again, you can watch it go through the loop as well. I'd like to see a feature where it replays what you did. Let's pause it so we're not taking damage. Now, this is a pretty interesting one, and this might be the last one I do. We'll see. Just because I think you're getting the idea of how this works. But one thing I would like to see is, before it goes on to the next level, if the developer just happens to be listening to this, I'd like to see it where you can rewatch the level and maybe watch it in slow motion. Because, or even if you make a mistake, right? So sometimes I make a mistake, but it goes by too quickly, and I miss what happened. So if I could have like an instant replay and maybe make it go in slow motion, so I can watch, oh, okay, here's where I line. Basically the equivalent of stepping through lines of code, which I, now that I think about it, I think I saw that in the description uh, of the video. But anyway, so we're almost certainly gonna need to use loops here. Well, we definitely gonna use loops because you can see we only got one of each. So let's start with the loop. And we need to turn left and attack. And then we need to move forward. Oh, well, actually, do we need to move forward at all? Because we have the cat, which always seems to jump. So we need to turn once, attack, and then that should automatically move me here. And then turn, yes, turn, attack, and then it automatically will move here. So that's one, two, turn, attack, three, Turn attack four, turn attack five. So let's make this five and let's try it out. 
Oh, one. There we go. So far, so good. All right. See? Easy. Dad, did you see that? Oh, I guess he went home. Spoilers. He didn't go home. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, no. Dad's been kidnapped by a bee that looks like a pencil. That looks unfortunate. And apparently he's taking the teacher with him because <laughs> her little picture is going up there with him. But uh, see, as you can see, the maps get a bit more complicated here. And you do have limited runes, so you have to figure out how best to get up there. You have to destroy these scarecrows because they get in the way and what have you. So, yeah, I think that's enough for you to get the idea of Codemancers. I can't say enough that I like this idea. Uh, for, I really am fascinated by the idea of teaching code coding via games. In fact, there's a few other games that I have they've had in my backlog for months that are supposed to help teach even a even in like adults or college students or whatever how to program while using games. I think it's an awesome idea. I'm really interested to see this implemented, and I think it is pretty cool that this one in particular is targeting uh, kids to make it into a game, but at the same time, get their brain thinking in like computer programming logic, the way that that works. And again, anybody who's programmed knows, knows how this makes sense thinking in that, uh, thinking in that way. And later on, like I say, it looks like it will actually show you the equivalent code on the side in Python, Java, or whatever, which again, I think is awesome blending the two together in a fun, interesting way. So I'm really it's, uh, excited to see how this project turns out. Again, it is going to be available for, for PC, Mac, iPad, and Android tablets. It is already met its goal. Actually, it's already actually over three times its current goal. So it, that's really good to hear. So we know it's going to get made. But yeah, definitely go check it out. It is Codemancer. All relevant links will be in the description of the video below. Thank you guys for watching. As always, please leave comments. Let me know what you thought of this game. And if you'd like to see more games that you might not have heard of, definitely make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. You step back, though. We are getting this I, I worked up you, about a mobile game. I, mean, I do hate you, though. <laughs> I want to be 100% clear with a moment of seriousness. I hate your guts.